It's our pleasure to have Dr. Shantanu Mondal, uh, who is a Ramanujan Fellow at Indian Institute of Astrophysics in Bengaluru as our speaker today. Uh, Shantanu did his uh, undergrad from Scottish Church College and then uh, master's from Narendra Ramakrishna Mission and then he joined the Indian Center for Space Physics uh, in Kolkata. Uh, as a PhD student, he did his PhD uh, under the supervision of uh, Professor Shwandeep Chakravarti, who is one of the uh, stalwarts of acquisition physics in, in India and the world. Uh, so after his finishing his PhD in 2015, uh, Shantanu did uh, one postdoc in uh, Chile, uh, and he worked with Patricia Arivalo, whom well, if Origit is not here, but Origit yeah, is actually, that's right. So Origit is actually, is one of his uh, work is based on Arikalo and Akli model. So so he worked with uh, Patricia in Chile and then another postdoc in Israel. But luckily he came back from Israel before all the, uh, or, you know, all the uh, yes. political turmoil and the I war, like etc. Speaker. Started, so... Uh, so he came back and he became a Ramanujan fellow at uh, Indian Institute of Astrophysics, where he is collaborating with uh, again uh, some collaborators of ours like uh, Dr. P. S. Kalin. Uh, so, Arjit, uh, so, so um, Chantanu will talk about observational aspects of uh, accreting black holes. Thank you for your nice introduction. <laughs> Yeah, so I am not a student from presidency, but I have a good memory with presidency. So I defended my final thesis here, yeah. PhD thesis, and Professor Snow Kulaychari was the external leader. So, so apparently I was out for yeah. the Chandra review in Boston in 2015. Yes, I was most likely with yeah. <laughs> And you were probably out at Ayuka also at the same time. That's yeah. right. So because Roy Chaturi, Professor Roy Chaturi was alone there during Oh. And joined by integrated in 2015. <laughs> <laughs> so your PhD was from Calcutta University, but Shoma Krajuri was the extra. Yeah. 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 So, as you know, black holes are most fascinating, one of the most fascinating objects and also strange objects, but uh, not because of their black holes, but because of their activity like our life. We become famous because of our activity. So it's the same. So black holes uh, are so powerful, they emit large amount of energy, like radiation energy or uh, mechanical energy as J. So if we do not, as you can see in this picture, if there, this is a combination, it is supplying matter. We do not see, as we know, uh, we do not see black holes directly, but light coming from their vicinity prove their existence. So without companion, uh, an isolated black hole is like stupid. It has nothing to do. We, we can't even detect it. We did not have a uh, gravitational wave. So companion is equally important, right? So I'll come to that. If we combine, if we uh, consider both uh, system, we can actually calculate uh, uh, companion properties, like binary properties, uh, and uh, that is very important. So. In this talk, I will mostly uh, talk about observational things uh, that motivates uh, theorists. Okay, so uh, so let's start uh, with some. Here is the brief uh, outline of my research. So I am showing this in, in my first slide so that uh, I can continue my talk with uh, some specific topics. So this is uh, mass transfer and accretion days from uh, black to low mass black and binaries where I model accretion and ejection. Like ejection means uh, this J to outflows which are coming out, that is unbound uh, process, and accretion is basically bound process. And uh, interpreting X ray observation using uh, what I model theoretically. And uh, next one is intermediate mass black holes because we know the supermassive black holes more or less uh, confirm. Most of the galaxies harbor supermassive black holes at their heart. So we don't have any question about this thing and this thing. But there is a large question about this one, like long-standing uh, question. That ultra-luminous uh, uh, X-ray sources are powered by uh, super accretion or due to intermediate mass black holes. 
So I just uh, started working uh, in this topic recently uh, when I uh, joined IUCA, uh, IIA. And uh, the third one is uh, basically, um, you know that Asians can be cla classified into different uh, categories like blazers, secret one, two, jetted, non-jetted, radio, long, white, etc. And one of them is uh, changing location. Like they, even a very short time scale, even hour to month time scale, they can change their appearance. So those are called changing look active galactic nuclei. So I'm working on that as well. And a completely different topic, this is uh, the Fermi bubbles. So you all know, you all are expert of Fermi data analysis, I think. You have used uh -huh. it. <laughs> yeah, so, so Fermi observed this uh, giant, uh, this red, double set bubbles in our Milky Way galaxy and led in uh, 2010. So it's a very uh, infant topic and uh, in the infant stage. And this uh, the second uh, two large bubbles you can see recently observed by Hirozita in uh, 2020. These are called Hirozita bubbles. So what can be the dynamical origin of these uh, bubbles? So I uh, do numerical simulation using Pluto code to uh, constraints of parameters and uh, what should be the uh, underlying processes that can produce such kind of observed bubbles. So my work is mostly related to AGI and its simulation in this uh, topic. So sorry, what is yeah. the, the difference between these two observations? Yeah, so this is in Fermi observation and other one is yeah. X-ray. Yeah, and the Fermi is also in it's no, 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 so uh, I will briefly talk about astrophysical black holes and uh, how uh, mass transfer occurs in the of binary black holes, especially low mass uh, black hole binaries, and what we see in uh, observation from spectral and timing domains. And uh, few uh, uh, fundamental questions, uh, those are yet uh, to be answered. And uh, my modeling, uh, estimating spin and mass parameters of black holes, and uh, as I said, changing to Asia. So, understanding black hole before Einstein, it was like Newtonian approach was there, Newtonian idea. So, uh, here you can see that uh, this uh, Michel and Laplace, they were uh, not a professional uh, astronomer, but they were amateur astronomer and they did, they like to do calculations. So, what they did, when Newtonian mechanics uh, came, the force due to gravity, as we know, if we throw a ball, it will fall back after some time. If we uh, throw it up even uh, at a higher velocity, it will still come back. But if we throw the ball with velocity 11 km per second, it will not come back. So we know that is the escape velocity. Now, they squeeze the earth with a radius 65 km, from 100 km to 65 km. And when they calculated uh, the escape velocity, it is 110 km. Now they squeeze even further to the whole earth 2.8 centimeter. Okay, and they found that you need to throw a ball with a velocity uh, which is equivalent to the speed of light, 300,000 kilometer. So if light cannot come, if uh, you need to throw something or uh, with a higher velocity than light, or the other way around, if light cannot come out from such a dense because you are squeezing our 2.8 centimeter radial volume. Okay, so that means the density is infinite almost. So with that, yes, it, one statistic, sorry. So velocity of light was measured uh, in, in in that that experiment. density is basically 
the curvature of the space. So consider, think about a rubber seat and put some uh, put a heavy object. What will happen? It will carve the rubber seat. And if you throw something, it will slowly start rotating and spiraling in and fall into that compact object. So that's what John Wheeler said that matter tells space how to carve and space tells matter how to move. So that's exactly the same thing. Now if we move to replace uh, uh, Earth by Sun, we can see that the whole mass is concentrated here, this black point, which is called the singularity, where general theory of relativity and quantum mechanics, both like uh, uh, so far what we have cannot be applied. So we need something more. Probably people call it grand unified theory. And this is the event horizon radius where uh, below which, like uh, within which, like cannot or whatever fall onto uh, within that radius will not, uh, cannot go out. So that is called the event horizon or no return point. Like if you, once you fall onto within that uh, radius, you cannot come out. So that is called the Schwarzschild radius. But interestingly, for Newtonian uh, approach was there, using that you can calculate the Schwarzschild radius, though the Schwarzschild after, just after like, 1915, uh, Einstein's GR uh, theory was proposed you know, in 1916. Swatchel calculated this radius, but uh, the black hole he considered was non rotating. It was just a uh, 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 spin of the black hole was zero. Anyway, so if you use the mass of the sun here, this is gravitational constant, universal gravitational constant, speed of light, you can see that the Swatchel radius for one solar mass black hole is around three kilometers. Like the, that whole, the huge thing is compressed by such a small uh, radius. So astrophysical black holes can be classified into three uh, types. Oh, oh, video is not working. So this is a PDF. Still it was working in my laptop. So oh, then you have to have some video there. Uh, copy the, that copy video or not copy. Right. Oh, okay, that folder. Oh, <laughs> anyway, sorry. So um, this is stellar mass black holes. Their mass range is more or less 3 to 20. So far we observe. Uh, but people claim that it can be up to 100 solar mass. And they are basically um, the result of death of massive star. As you can see, when, uh, we know that the, at the interior of uh, uh, star, there is uh, a nuclear fusion reaction is going on. So hydrogen plus hydrogen to helium. Helium to even uh, higher uh, 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 atomic mass. Uh, 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 elements uh, uh, forms and at some point uh, when the nuclear fusion is going on it radiates huge amount of energy and uh, that radius and pressure if it can balance the gravitational pull then we can see normal star but at some point uh, this uh, then uh, for most of the star, massive stars that are out of uh, nuclear uh, um, uh, uh, fuel and gravity 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 pull domain uh, Dominates and start, uh, the outer layer of the star ejects, which we call supernova, and the remnant, as a remnant, we get black holes or neutral star, depending on the mass of the star. If it is tens of solar mass, then we get black holes uh, or even higher, and uh, if it is less than 10 solar mass, we get neutrals. For supermassive black holes, we don't know its uh, formation, but uh, uh, in most of the galaxies' uh, center, we uh, see them uh, like as a quasar or active galactic nuclei, their mass ranges from 10 to 6 to 10 to 9 solar mass. It is believed that probably collapse of uh, large gas cloud forms, supermassive black holes, or uh, it can be due to uh, uh, during the marching event of galaxies, uh, such kind of uh, supermassive black holes form. And this intermediate mass black holes they fall in the range 100 to 10 to 5 solar mass. Uh, Earlier, people used to put uh, 20 or 30 solar mass, but gravitational wave detected uh, mostly in this range, uh, like around 100 or uh, 80, 60 solar mass. So, still, this topic is um, yeah, debated. And uh, here you can see the live video of two uh, marching black holes. So they, they will march at some point uh, and uh, form, yeah, form an intermediate mass black. So, do they all have the same food habit? The question is like, well, as we know, that black hole accretes matter from its surrounding. Not necessarily it has to be the companion. Even in host galaxy, whatever dust, grain, even radiation, it can like, it's it's a messy eater. So uh, uh, different uh, system 
actually it has different ways. For example, in case of uh, uh, low mass black hole binaries, where companion mass is less than one solar mass, they actually uh, through loss of overflow. So it's uh, uh, companion star. It uh, initially black hole uh, tidally uh, deform the companion star, and after some uh, time, the companion star supply matter through the uh, loss of uh, point. And this, uh, as we know, the angular momentum is conserved. So this star is rotating, black hole is rotating. So the matter which is coming from the companion, when it falls, uh, falls onto the black hole, it uh, uh, keeps uh, angular momentum conserved. So the matter starts. Uh, uh, rotating around the uh, black hole. So this is one thing. And the second, in case of high mass X-ray binary, uh, the companion mass is higher than the black hole mass. It's uh, more than uh, 10 solar mass. We know the Cygnus X1 first black hole, which was detected, is a high mass X-ray binary. Its companion is around 40 solar mass. So in this case, uh, solar uh, this uh, star's wind stellar wind can be activated by the central black hole. And the third one is the uh, active galactic nuclei, the supermassive black hole is sitting here. It can, uh, as I said, it can accrete gas from the host galaxy. Also, it can, uh, tidal, uh, due to tidal uh, disruption effect, it can also accrete uh, uh, mass from the star. Did you say which one was 40 solar mass? For Cygnus X1. The companion star was 40 solar mass? Yeah. Oh. And the mass of the black hole is around 20, and companion is around 40. So it's oh. yeah. So uh, so far, this is the most efficient known way of conversion of uh, mass to energy. And uh, now we can calculate like how much power it uh, generates like during this accretion process. How can we do that? So um, these are basically uh, uh, solutions uh, from uh, uh, like. Uh, your method, mathematical point of view that when the matter is falling onto a black hole, it releases significant amount of uh, energy. Like if you put some uh, mass and if you uh, rotate it in a Keplerian orbit, we know that the uh, the, uh, the potential energy uh, will be converted. How much amount of potential energy will be converted to uh, the heat energy? So this is the 6% of the rest mass energy in case of Schwarzschild black hole, we can convert from rest mass to, uh, to accretion, uh, due to accretion, and uh, this 40% is for highly spinning black hole. So uh, this, that is uh, like this. So for this uh, maximum rotating black hole, so which is higher, m dot is higher or eta is higher? No, eta is higher. So this eta is uh, uh, actually 0.4. For uh, non spinning black hole, it is around 0 0.1, 0 0.6. It can go closer to the black hole. Yes. So the enormous stable circular orbit is smaller. Yeah, so this is almost a half, basically. So um, this is enormous stable circular orbit, is like the last some orbit where consider a test particle is rotating around a black hole. So that is the last circular orbit where. Uh, the, the particle can rotate in a circular orbit and just beyond that it will fall onto the black hole. So, um, but within that black hole, as I said, from that uh, radius, uh, no radiation uh, can come out. So, now this efficient, uh, as you, this picture here is so that something is coming out as well, some radiation. That means you are generating some heat and also the heat is radiating out. So if the heating, that means cooling. So if the heating and cooling, they balance each other, we we, uh, we can get, we call it uh, radiatively efficient disk. That, that kind of disk is known as Keplerian kind of a standard uh, disk. But in case of black hole, when we see observation, we see that only Keplerian disk is not enough. So something is happening there. And that is basically called the radiatively inefficient uh, flow that that can describe uh, many observations. So just here, so G M M dot M dot is the mass accretion rate, and G M by R is basically the uh, potential energy, and eta M dot C square eta is the uh, efficiency factor. So eta M dot C square you can also calculate accretion uh, luminosity. Now. So that luminosity can be uh, expressed in terms of like we need some unit. That we know that uh, that is r per second luminosity. 
but we can also uh, uh, calculate them in, like express them in terms of some reference luminosity which is called the Eddington luminosity. Suppose, uh, suppose here you have a star, it is uh, radiating isotropically and one test particle is here. So this radiation will uh, put some uh, pressure to this uh, particle which is uh, due to uh, force due to radiation pressure and the gravitational uh, force between these two objects will uh, try to pull this uh, test particle. So once they balance each other, we get the adding to limit. So L by 4 pi r square is basically the flux that is coming out. When you multiply it, this will, with sigma Thomson scattering cross section by speed of light, we can get the rate of change of momentum, which is basically the force. And here is the gravitational force. So uh, just uh, doing some, putting all these numbers, we can get for one solar mass black hole, it is around 1.3 times into a 38 hour per second. Again, if you know luminosity, you can calculate Eddington accretion rate as well. Okay, you, uh, from Eddington luminosity, you can calculate Eddington accretion rate for a given accretion efficiency. So, again, sorry to the video. So, this is basically shows the video of uh, mass transfer from a companion and how the uh, matter is uh, slowly spiraling in and falling onto the black hole. So, uh, this uh, accreting material forms a disk like structure as I said, that is called the so called accretion disk. So, this disk was uh, uh, a classic paper in a classic paper by Sakura and Sunai that uh, they uh, proposed it the first successful, I, I would say, that uh, disk they, uh, they proposed that that time that could explain the uh, observed luminosity of quasars. And later, uh, uh, this model required many modifications, but uh, 50 years, it's only 50 years back, it was the most successful model. It has a general relativistic version also by Novikov and Thorne in 1973. So what happens, as you can see, to our star supply matter, this is the hot spot. So it's not the matter is supplying, this is forming, and we can see beautiful uh, variations in observed data. That is not the case. So what happens? So matter accumulates at this region, this uh, this hot hot spot, and uh, its temperature grows. And at some point, when it crosses the ionizing temperature, hydrogen ionizing temperature, which is about four Kelvin, so matter starts accreting. And the another uh, point is that if the matter is accumulated there, crosses the critical limit, and the radiation from this central black hole can reheat. We call it irradiation. If the system itself irradiate this uh, uh, heat of this region, matter will start uh, falling and it will uh, slowly uh, spiral in. But as we know that something is rotating, if we do not perturb it, it will keep on rotating for infinite time, right? Because in a Keplerian orbit. So we have to do something. And you can see that the matter is falling, there is a friction. So due to this friction, Viscosity is there because friction is there means viscosity is there. So that viscosity will transport angular momentum. So suppose this this is one uh, um, circular orbit and here is another circular orbit of uh, fluid and there there is a friction. So this this layer will transport angular momentum to the, the outer one and it will move it will a little bit inward. Again, they will have once it moves inward, we know that uh, the velocity. Velocity, rotation of velocity will increase because R is decreasing. So again, there will be a huge velocity difference because the outer one has uh, lesser velocity, inner one has, has velocity increase. So there will, the velocity difference, relative velocity will be higher. So this way, it will keep on moving towards the black hole and this is called the transport of angular momentum due to viscosity. And as I said, uh, the energy that com comes out as uh, radiation, it can be like due as jet or, or it can be due to like radius energy that I said. So we, we observe. So, so this is the disk, mass is falling in. So angular momentum is transporting outward, mass is falling inward. So this kind of disk is relatively efficient. So heating is balanced by the pulling. And the, the, uh, the uh, thickness of the disk is very low. So we call it optic, uh, geometrically thin disk, but the density is very high, so that's why if you if you have some of the same number of uh, of uh, particles or whatever, if it is ionized electrons and photons, if its uh, height is higher, 
density will be lower. So in case of uh, this Kepler air disk, this is uh, uh, optically optically thin because its uh, height is very low, but density is high. And uh, this disk can produce black body. I would say modified black body or multi-temperature black body because uh, at each radius of the disk, we know the luminosity, we know Stephen Boltzmann's law, sigma t to the power 4 equals to L, so we can calculate the temperature. And I showed you that the luminosity is inverse to the radial distance, right? So from there, the temperature of the disk has a dependency with radial distance. So at different radial distance, we will get different temperature. Now, if you integrate the whole disk, you will get the, for a single single uh, energy band, you will get a yeah, multi-temperature black body because the different radial of the disk has a different temperature. But from observation, we really do not see only this, uh, only one black body component. From observation, as an observer, uh, we see something different. And this spectrum is not sufficient to explain the what we observe. So here you can see this is a companion supply matter. Now let's look at this isolated black hole. Forget about uh, this companion for now. So you can see there is one disk which is called uh, Keplerian disk. This is cold. You do not see any jet or anything. And here you can see uh, the other component, the inner region, which is very hot. Because, so gravitational energy is converting to kinetic energy. So if you move closer to the black hole, it's, your velocity will increase. So now the kinetic energy to thermal energy, thermal energy to radiation. So uh, this is a thumb rule. So it will always increase. If you go inward, closer to the black hole, this thumb rule uh, will always be followed. So from this, so from this Keplerian disk, I already mentioned we, we, we can get the black body radiation. This is the black body bomb, which is around 1 keV. From the inner uh, region, we see the heart because electrons at this region, uh, the temperature is very high. So let me uh, give some numbers. So this disk has maximum temperature uh, less than 1 keV. Okay, 1 keV means 10 to the 7 Kelvin. And this inner region has temperature, it can be uh, 100 to few hundred uh, keV. That means 10 to the power 9 uh, degree Kelvin. So the, at, at this temperature, electrons and photons, they are thermally decoupled because their mass is different. So they are hitting and cooling rates are also different, right? The interaction. So at this region, they, both electrons and photons, they follow different temperature profile. So and the, uh, this, this disk, Kepler disk produces, because this disk is cold, so it will produce cold photons, like soft photons. And those photons, when they will pass through this hot region, they will extract energy due to inverse control effect. We know it's uh, control is like uh, photon is giving energy to the electron, but inverse control is just opposite. Photon is gaining energy from the electron. But in between these two, soft and hard, you can see there is another step which is called the intermediate step. So here is you can this is the spectral slope. Here you know the slope. But here the slope is little bit different. So this uh, this is uh, we generally if we have long exposure observation or some telescope observe a black hole for months like what RxT did. Uh, so we can clearly see these spectral shapes that the spectral slope or shape is changing when it is moving from hard to soft state or vice versa. Now if you Calculate the count rate. So uh, for the whole uh, energy band, say 4 to 10 keV. And if in the x-axis, if you divide like 2 to 4, the uh, low energy photons divided by 6 to 4, yeah, high those are high energy photons, right? So when I am saying hard state, that means uh, high energy photon is more compared to the low energy or soft energy photons. So this is the ratio, this is called the hardness ratio. Now if you plot the total count rate with the hardness ratio, you can see beautiful Q-shaped diagram. This is the, called the hardness intensity diagram. This is hardness and this is count rate, basically intensity. So hardness intensity diagram. But uh, 
this is the beauty of RXT satellite, like it observed more than months. That's why we could make such kind of plots, like it moving from a hard state and then moving to intermediate state and then high soft, which is basically the soft state. High soft means there is a high bump and in the case the soft state. And low hard means uh, this, this, uh, this is like the tail is much lower compared to this bump. So that's why called low hard, soft high or high soft. And then again comes back to hard state. So this Q diagram, but now the question, yeah. So you said the, pro yeah. oh, no, no. So you said the protons are uh, going from soft to hard state or hard to soft state because the protons are gaining energy. Right? Okay. Yeah, photons are gaining energy. Photons. Photons. Not protons. Photons. Yeah, photons. 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 Yeah. So light. It is. Yeah. So uh, it's gaining energy. That means it is uh, moving from hard to soft state. Say it has less energy. Okay. That means soft state. The luminosity is different. Photons energy is different. Right. So uh, when their energy is low, that means they are soft photons. They can like suppose one photon. Uh, it has energy uh, say 0.5 keV. Okay, it may get scattered by the electron cloud. What electron cloud? Oh, it can become like uh, it can its intensity can increase. At the same time, photons with energy say 10 keV, they also can. But that depends on the temperature of the electron. Like if your photons temperature is 10 keV, uh, photons energy is 10 keV, and electrons uh, cloud has uh, temperature less than 10 keV. It will not uh, upscatter. It, it, the other thing will happen. Like we call them downscattering. So in that case, photon may lose energy, and so both can happen. But generally, we see upscattering. Like electrons are very hot. Yeah, your question. Sorry, uh, I might have missed it. This so, is the trajectory of a what? Is the uh, each point represents what? Uh, it was it a point represents each observation. Each observation of the same object. Same object. Same object. Same object. So, of the mostly RXT observe uh, every day. So today you have some information. Every day for few months. Few, yeah. And each so time you are measuring intensity and yeah. hardness. And this is one cycle takes several months. Few months. Yeah, few months. One cycle takes several months. Yeah. Well, generally within uh, two months you can, uh, if you have two months observation. Because Depends on the object. Object, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And also like when you are observing, if you start observing the source here, then you will not get the whole picture. Yeah, and this this whole picture is more or less equal to the viscous time scale. Because everything, the matter which is coming and falling onto the black hole is, uh, is in viscous time scale. So if you are, uh, the separation between the two systems, if it is higher, time scale will be higher. So that is... Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So this EF is basically D and D, right? Energy time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sound rate. Yeah. Yeah. So this is basically D and D. So when you say soft, that means the slope is high yeah. because in in case of uh, if you use Planck's law, black body that uh, expression, if you differentiate that uh, MCBT vector uh, as a function of frequency, you will get the maximum slope. It can be three. Hmm. So that is the pure black body. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, exactly the same thing. Same from black body, we are getting this. Okay, so the soft state is a black body, uh -huh. and then intermediate state uh, yes, is mixed. Black black mix. black so it's black body plus non thermal. No, yes, right. it's like both kind of uh, mixed photons, like soft photon and hard photon. So the black body plus non thermal, non -thermal. and then yeah, hard is non thermal. Yeah, so basically a transition from black body like to non thermal like feature. Yeah, power feature. feature. Feature, yeah. So, uh, not necessarily it has to be non-thermal, it can be thermal. So, uh, what you said, like this uh, optical depth and those are the factors, mm -hmm. but the another factor is that whether it will be thermal or non-thermal depending on the electron distribution. Mm -hmm. In case of non-thermal, we always use power law distribution of electron. Mm -hmm. But in case of thermal, it's Maxwellian, like what we deal in our thermodynamics, like okay. Maxwellian distribution. Yeah. So, it's not necessarily non-thermal? No, yeah. It could be just yeah, thermal. thermal yeah. So, so in, basically soft then is thermal. Yeah. Hard is not No, hard can be thermal. And may or may not, not be thermal. Yeah. yeah. But uh, if you see like a huge tail, then it's definitely some non-thermal component is there. Okay. Okay. And intermediate is a combination of both thermal and non-thermal. Or soft and hard. I used to call them because non-thermal thermal is a bit tricky, but 
we can call this in a soft state because soft soft photon because we can clearly see this. Yeah. yeah, soft energy and uh, I, uh, okay. Okay. Soft energy, energies, intermediate energies, and higher yeah. energy. So yes. So now the question is like, do you always get such kind of two months observation and uh, do all uh, instruments? Cover four to ten keV because some instrument like XMM neutron it covers from 0.3 to 10 keV. So people divide this energy band, soft band, from 0.3 to say 2 keV and 2 to 10 keV is a hard band. So I have just another question. So here when you see this curve, mm -hmm. on this left side there's a curve is smoother. But when you actually go to that side, all the yeah, this one, <laughs> these are most complicated because the, we do not have any smooth uh, transition like observation fluctuates it's a very short time scale because this when this soft state happens the 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 disc whole disc already moved much closer to the black hole so this, the effect of gravity is much more and there can be many other oscillations and all these things so that can fluctuate but, but is, it, is, it, is it in physical reason or is just that even that you have much more close monitoring. Maybe that, that yeah, so that was my question. Is it the code? Is it cadence no, no, related? Not that. It's oh, just it's... that in that part of the Q diagram, yeah. the object sort of circles around the same area oh, many times yeah. before it comes down in intensity. So you have many points like. But then the other part is really a smooth Other part yeah. is relatively more. Yeah, yeah it's because... like a smooth thing. This, this, and then. Yeah, because if the, if when this part we say, that means the inner edge of the disk moves much closer to the black hole. Okay, slowly moving inwards. When you see this part, this again, disk again receives away. So, so it's like that's why these two parts more or less the same. Okay, disk is far from the black hole. But in this part, disk is very close to the black hole, and many effects are there, like here. Yeah. So and this is called the Q diagram. So as I said, XMM neutron observes 0 0.5 to 0 0.3 to 10 keV, and they define this hardness 0 0.3 to 2 keV divided by 2 to 10 keV. Now, if we move to new star observation, new star observes 3 to 79 keV. So people define that 3 to 10 keV is uh, uh, soft and 10 to 79. So there is no standard reference, and also different uh, uh, satellite. It has different uh, collects uh, this uh, yeah, response and also this uh, effective area. So that can also change. So there is no standard, uh, but luckily people got such a good uh, HIT diagram and it uh, can explain many observation timing properties as well. But okay, let's see. So I saw something different. Shantan, you have about 15 minutes. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just started. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so in a uh, in, uh, time domain, what we see that this is just some random uh, fluctuation. In, and, uh, 20 minutes. If you uh, just uh, take the Fourier telescope, you can uh, see certain uh, uh, spikes here. And you can, if you calculate this uh, feed, this uh, spikes, you can get a frequency around 1.174. 2.34 exactly double. So we call it uh, harmonics. Okay, and this is in the frequency uh, domain. So th this is the fundamental frequency and this is the uh, mm, harmonic. And this is for low mass black hole binaries, but in case of uh, intermediate mass black holes M82 X1, you can also see such kind of peaks. These are called the quasi periodic oscillations. So this type of QPOs we see across uh, all uh, black holes. And uh, there uh, are different models that can explain this kind of uh, oscillations. As I said, there is a heating and cooling. When matter is uh, falling onto a black hole, heating, they are getting compressed. So they will uh, heat the, uh, um, uh, the the system at the same time due to inverse containerization, they will cool down the system. So it's a tug of war between heating and cooling. That means the disk may, uh, due to cooling, it move inward. And again, due to heating, it may go backwards. So due to this oscillation, it can produce such kind of QPOs. So another question is, are they interlinked? So here you can see soft spectrum. Most of this red curve is black body and the uh, blue one is the power law one. And uh, if you look at the timing properties, you do not see any spikes or anything. But in the hard state, you can see that the power law is uh, dominating and you can see spikes. That means both this spectral and spectrum and timing 
they are somehow interlinked and the same region uh, is producing such kind of uh, features. So um, jets are also common, so I'm skipping for now. Jets uh, in the case of Lomas black, uh, black holes is GRS1 and 15, this NGC 13, 13X1 intermediate mass autonomous X resource, and we know this M87, and they either so jets or outflows. So what can be the sign signature of jets and outflows in our observed uh, spectra? So there are many models to explain all this. So this is the Keplerian disk, as I said, and this is the hot corona they need to uh, inverse uh, compromise the soft photons. And when they are getting inverse compromised, they are uh, pulling this corona. This is uh, this corona name came from solar corona. And some fraction of uh, uh, fraction of this uh, hard radiation may fall back to the disk, get absorbed, produce atomic transitions that comes out as uh, emission lines. And some fraction we uh, observe, Th those are called the uh, reflection component. So all these components are required to fit the observed data. There are other models like many component clouds are floating around. So we don't know who is producing and how they are producing, but they are required to fit observation early time during 1980s. But now things are converging. And uh, so these are the some uh, observation and motivated questions. How uh, do black hole binaries change their spectral state? What is the required viscosity parameter for spectral state change? How to estimate mass and spin parameter of black holes? What is the role of uh, jet mass outflows in the spectrum and timing variability? So all in one, is it possible to combine all these features in uh, one model so that we explain everything same consistently? So as I said, the standard disk or Keplerian disk can produce uh, black body. So what we need, matter is rotating. So it needs angular momentum. This, uh, this is the uh, centrifugal force or uh, energy due to rotation, and this is the gravitational potential. Uh, we, we know that uh, close to the black hole, Newtonian approach uh, does not work. So this is pseudo-Newtonian potential, or focused by Pekinski and Witta. And this is the uh, thermal energy. Uh, gamma is the arithmetic index, uh, and uh, V is the velocity of the flow. And this is the continuity equation, velocity times rho V into uh, area. Area is basically the scale height times Consider a cylinder, so this is basically radius times height, and this is the equation of state equals to k to the power gamma. K is the entropy, and entropy. So combining these two, we can uh, get entropy acquisition rate equation. So solving all these, what we can, and this is the ranking of one year soft condition we use like energy balance. So, so suppose the flow is moving inward, it has a gravitational pull, and due to centrifugal rotation. Uh, centrifugal force, uh, 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 some, uh, the, it will try to resist the incoming flow. So at some point, these two forces will balance each other and they will form a soft. So here we study ranking over here, soft condition. And this pulling is basically the uh, power of pulling that I said due to inverse compromise effect. So if we solve all these equations combined, uh, combined here, and we can see that the flow, which is coming from outer, uh, somewhere from the field, it will pass through the outer sonic point and the speed of light is, uh, sorry, the speed of the flow is equal to the uh, sound, local sound speed and it will become supersonic. And we know supersonic flow uh, can form soft. So it will uh, form a soft, it will turn, become subsonic, but as the gravity is dominating, it will again uh, move inward and pass through the inner sonic point and finally fall onto the black hole. So, this is the whole uh, topology uh, in the Mach number and uh, radial distance uh, plane of the of the flow. But it is not necessary that soft will fall uh, form always because it depends on the energy and angular momentum of the flow and also whether it is satisfying anti-numerate conditions or not. So Shantanu, what is X? X is basically the radial uh, distance. It's one dimensional flow. So this is uh, so, so it's just in distance units, yeah, not, not like yeah, uh, it's not it's not it's not okay. And h is the uh, height height of the disk. Yeah. So, so for this uh, equation of state, what kind of equation of state do you assume? Matthew's equation of state. Hello? So what kind of equation of state for the fluid do you assume? Yeah, this is k root to the power gamma. As you can see, this is just ideal gas equation. Right? Okay. Uh, yeah, so we can like, yeah. so you can do anything. I mean, are you asking gamma, 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 yeah. gamma, okay, you are, so gamma, this is flow, 4 by 3 to 5 by 3, we can apply, if it is relativistic flow, 5 by 3, if it is not relativity, this 4, 4, 3, you can use, 
But if you put it zero, you can get isothermal. So non-relativistic is uh, four thirds or non-relativistic is uh, five thirds. Five. Non-relativistic is five thirds. The other way. Yeah. So and putting zero, you can get isothermal solution. So all these are in uh, in the same model. So we try to fit the data using two component model. Here, as we, as we uh, uh, see from observation, we need one component which is Keplerian, other one is the uh, hot component which is the corona and the shock is producing such kind of corona because it is uh, generating heat, puffing up the disk, making the uh, electrons and protons ionized, so uh, atoms ionized and, and uh, doing all this uh, inverse complex scattering, etc. So we fitted uh, H1743 minus 322 lapel candidate. This is the QPO frequency variation and this is the size of the corona, how the corona is changing during the, observ the whole observation period. And we can see initially during the hard state, corona was bigger and slowly uh, moved inward, uh, corona um, uh, size uh, become less and during the soft state, it's more or less as uh, Professor Rituman said, it's, uh, the size of the corona is more or less the same throughout the soft state and again, it follows some hysteresis thing. So here if you plot the same thing that they plotted using hardness, we, we have the cold flow and hot flow component. That is one flow which is producing soft photons and the other flow uh, which is producing uh, the uh, hard photons. If you take the ratio, we can get the similar to what they call the hardness. So we call it accretion rate ratio intensity diagram. And we can uh, see that they are following some hysteresis um, the profile. Interestingly, we see that the QPO, uh, the timing property is that QPO disappears when the accretion rate ratio is a half. So in this model, how is the QPO being produced? What is happening in the disk? Yeah, this is just uh, oscillation. Like uh, they, we have some heating time scale and also cooling time scale. When we see that the, they are closely matching, then we see QPOs. So that is uh, the, the time scale. Is heating cooling time scales are what you are putting no we are calculating heating and uh, because we have all the parameters because we know the temperature we know the radius so we can calculate the uh, the total energy of the corona and from there we can calculate cooling rate yeah. so for qp you have the certain weight to the frequency diagram what you showed uh -huh. so you have quick quasi periodic setting so what is the uh, ratio delta f by f ah uh, that depends like we can uh, classify it into uh, low frequency and high frequency. Low frequencies can be classified into A, B, and C. This, this is another topic of uh, yeah. research. So I, I have all those, but there uh, depends. Like even less than one to it can go up to 10. Okay. okay. So depending on that, we we call A, B, or C type QPLs. Yeah. So here we calculated the viscosity parameter, and we uh, we notice that the viscosity uh, is uh, increasing. Uh, with uh, time and if we use constant viscosity throughout the days, uh, we cannot produce observed QP frequencies. So this dash line is from theory and uh, the, uh, the dots are basically the, from observation. So viscosity you know, should change uh, with time to get the evolution of observed QP frequencies. So we use, as I said, these two layers and there is a change in angular momentum. And this is basically the torque. So from that torque, we can calculate uh, alpha viscosity parameter. <laughs> anyway, so uh, the, we applied the same technique for five black hole binaries and we noticed that five of them, they are following some uh, range of viscosity during hard state, intermediate state and soft state. So based on the viscosity values, we can classify the uh, hard to soft state. And uh, our viscosity range nicely matching with uh, numerical simulation. If you look at Masada Sano, they use some MRI magneto rotation instability simulation, which is called the bulbous hole. I'm not going into the detail. So using that simulation, they got the viscosity can be around 0.2 maximum, which is nicely matching with our mm, uh, theoretical estimations. So, uh, so we have uh, this um, uh, the, the data uh, for uh, uh, from uh, different. Uh, uh, satellites like new star uh, is giving very nice uh, high resolution data and uh, we have fitted uh, the whole spectra using different models in some cases i showed that we see some emission line which is around 6.4 kV fe iron k alpha line but that line not necessarily will appear always as a single peak it can appear as a twin peak if 
the uh, if there is a highly spinning black hole, it can rotate the mat uh, matter faster, much faster. So we can get one uh, red shifted, other one is blue shifted lines. And these are basically these two peaks, red shifted and blue shifted. So these are uh, from here we can estimate the spin parameter of the black hole, how fast the uh, black hole is rotating. And for GS three three nine minus four, uh, we notice that the spin is around 0.98. And uh, uh, so similarly, by fitting the uh, whole spectra for uh, for a month or so, we can calculate the mass of the black hole. So we uh, found that the mass of the black hole for H1743-322 is around 11.2 uh, solar mass. Now, when the, something is rotating, it can also push the matter. No? The, the infalling matter which is coming, due to rotation, they get pushed. This is called the uh, due to uh, for the turbulence, so uh, the the that uh, the uh, due to rotation when the flow slows down, it will take much longer time because some someone is pushing outward, so it will take much longer time to fall onto the black hole. If time is much longer, your uh, QPO frequency will be lower because it's uh, inverse to the infrared time scale. So in in our anchorment shock condition, we try to check how turbulence can affect uh, the flow. So we uh, modified the pressure balance condition in the shock condition, introducing a turbulent factor Ft, and we uh, uh, did the whole calculation, estimated the QP frequency, all possible QP frequency for all, all, all sets of energy and angular momentum. And we noticed that when turbulence is present, the, you can see this color, but the, the formation of low frequency QPO is much higher. So why suddenly I did this calculation? So it, it should have some uh, motivation. So motivation is that GX339-4, it uh, showed very low millihertz QPO frequency. And if the QPO frequency is inverse to the length scale, which is basically the size of the corona, in that case, if your frequency is low, the size of the corona has to be very large, okay? But when we feed the spectra, we see that corona is not that large, which is required to explain QPU frequency. So we need some uh, physical process that can solve this issue. From spectrum, we are getting smaller corona, but we, from QPU timing properties, we see that we need bigger corona. So that's why smaller corona can produce QPU frequency if some kind of turbulence, it can be due to dynamic or it can be due to rotation. So that is important. So I applied this for uh, rotating black hole because gx 39 is a high spinning black hole. So my project student uh, is doing for non-rotating if we see any signature or not. So this uh, basically, as I said, this is the signature of mass outflow. So I already talked about that we need two components. One is the cold disk and the other one is the hot corona. But I saw that most of the black holes or astrophysical uh, black holes, they produce either jets or outflow. So we try to see how jet or outflow can affect the uh, spectrum of black holes. So what can happen? This soft photons, earlier it was uh, getting scattered by the hot corona. But when they are becoming hard, they can pass through the jet, right? And they can again get scattered by the jet medium. Or these photons, soft photons, they may get again half scattered by the jet component. And their signatures we can see here. So this is at the shoulder of black body, you can see some excess radiation. And here also, uh, above uh, 10 kV, you can see some bomb like structure. So this is because jet is moving some high velocity. So it, uh, because it's motion, it can affect the uh, spectral feature, which is called the bulk motion component. So, so uh, earlier people used to say that this bump may be due to reflection, but we see that this kind of, also earlier uh, one group, they also showed this, I, I just took their solution and applied to my case. So, uh, they, uh, so they also showed that not necessarily the reflection can uh, produce such kind of bump, but it can be due to jet effects. And if we uh, feed the data GS1354 minus uh, 64, this candidate source significant, significant outflows. And we fitted the spectrum, we calculated the uh, model parameters, estimated the outflow to inflow ratio, which is around 12%, and uh, 
So outflow, which is which uh, uh, we got is fuel percent of the inflow. So if the matter is coming out. So here you can see this is the uh, thing about this funnel. So matter is uh, coming out as uh, an outflow and filling this uh, small region. Then once the pressure is enough, it can eject the jet uh, and it can become unbound. So to fill this region, how much time it will take? So we calculated that time scale, which is called the burst time. And we see that burst time is around 20 seconds. And when we notice this uh, observed light curve, they also showed variability around 20 seconds. So we, initially I did not notice this paper, but I cited this paper when the, my paper uh, came for two grade. There I saw this, this result and it's nicely matching with uh, the observation. So it can be possible such kind of 20 second or even 10 second variability might be due to the jet effect because some matter may go out, but some may again fall back due to the gravitational pull. And that can change the inner accretion rate. So that can produce such kind of variability. So this is associate observation. Associate observed Swift J1658 and uh, Jitesh and Ranjit, they found nice feature that the flux is changing. This is the demarcation line, which is basically low flux and high flux state. And we applied our model to this data for both uh, high flux and uh, low flux, as well as the combined uh, uh, high and low flux data. And we found that on the same day, accretion rate is changing significantly. So that can uh, produce such kind of uh, flip-flop behavior. We call it flip-flop behavior or alternating flux behavior. So here I did some uh, calculation for the companion. So I, as I said in my first slide, the companion is equally important. So what did I do? You can see this exponential decay of the power law. This can be due to irradiation effect that I showed initially. Because initially, matter accumulates at the outer boundary, then it slowly decays and it follows some exponential behavior. And uh, from uh, this King and Ritter's uh, solution, I uh, modified it and uh, um, relaxed some assumptions that may. So from there, I calculated uh, the outer, what should be the outer radius of the disk. And from this fitting, we can get viscosity time scale. As I said, the, the light curve that which is decaying follows viscous time scale. So fitting this profile, we can get viscous time scale. We have outer radius of the disk. From binary companion theory, we know what should be the raw slope. So raw slope is so the outer radius of the disk from where matter is started falling onto the black hole can be 80 to 70 to 80 percent of the raw slope. So from raw slope and combining all these equations. I can calculate the orbital period of the system. So from there, I calculated uh, observe, uh, this uh, orbital period for the source and found it uh, around 3.5 to 4.5 hour. So no orbiting period system. And the binary separation is around 2 to 3 times 10 to 11 centimeter. So this is uh, for my final slide. Sorry uh, for taking too long. So uh, we uh, observed, uh, as to say recently observed this uh, GFC 39 during 2021. So we started uh, its light curve and uh, uh, check the timing properties and we found that there is uh, uh, again alternating flux behavior in this uh, source also. We, uh, we have fitted the spectrum and uh, checked how the accretion parameter is changing. So we noticed that interesting thing from spectral fitting is that the disk is receding. So the disk is just uh, moving away from the black hole, but spectral flux, the, the coronal flux, is also reducing. So what if this receives away, generally size of the corner should be bigger and it should give more photons, higher uh, quantum flux. But it's not, it is opposite. Why? <clears throat> we noticed from the radio and other observation and we found that the source ejected jet or outflows during that time. So that's why corona shrink, therefore corona flux decrease, jet ejected and actually uh, received away from the black hole. So this is an interesting feature we observed. And also notice that the, the sigma to two, uh, A equals to sigma to two, uh, 4, what I told you in Sakura's life case, this uh, uh, source did not follow that. So it can be due to this high accretion rate, which is beyond the Sakura's disk region, or it can be 
uh, something uh, else like maybe this uh, some uh, some matter uh, jet matter fall back and increase the accretion rate. Some so we need to study that uh, effect. So <clears throat> this is the end of my black hole binary. So thank you. Sorry for taking time. <laughs> I do not have any conclusion for now because this slide is like self summarized. Okay, thank you, Shantanu, for showing us uh, some part of your total body of work. Uh, so, questions? Everything is crystal clear. <laughs> I think we have uh, Yeah, we have many questions in between. Okay, I mean, so you talked about this first harmonic and second harmonic. So if you go back to that slide. Mm -hmm. Now, for each of these harmonics, you have some uh, spread, right? Yeah. So uh, can you tell me, so why do you have any good explanation? Why do you see up to the second harmonic and not the third harmonic? And how does the spread of each of the harmonic changes yeah. compared to the first? Yeah, yeah. So, so first of all, this type of one is to two or two is to three, we observe during intermediate steps when the disk moves much closer to the black hole. Okay. So if the the disk is much closer to the black hole, if you look, uh, gravitational pull is much higher. That that means the corona which we see, like a nice spherical corona or whatever size, it can oscillate in different frequency because it's a region of around 10, 10 20 Schwarz radius, right? That means it's some 10 to a 7 centimeter blob. You can think about it. And it is much closer to the black hole. It is oscillating. So one part of the corona may oscillate in some other in some frequency. Other part may oscillate in some other frequency. Or it can be possible because black holes uh, due to huge gravity, the shock that I'm talking about, it's, it can, it may break into different parts, fragmented shock. So maybe what I'm calling about one shock, it can be like more than one shock. And each of them are oscillating in different frequencies. Okay. And due to that, we can get two different uh, peaks. Okay. And this, whether it will be here or not, it not necessarily it has to be one is to two. It can be two is to three. It can be three is to five. It can be one is to three is to five. So I just saw one case where it's one is to two. Okay. So, so, so my but, question remains, so why to remain up to some discrete frequencies and then it is not changing? Is it due to the instrumental sensitivity that you're not being able to see uh, even higher order harmonies, for yeah, example? High, in this case? Higher order harmonies, as I said, like if you have 3 is to 5 or so, 1 is to 3 is to 5, you can see that. But that's it has to satisfy some physical condition, as I said, maybe the oscillation or maybe the precision, different effects are there. But that may not uh, satisfy always. If satisfies, then it will uh, it will produce even uh, five, uh, one is to two is to three or five higher harmonics. And the sec second thing that you asked with a high frequency, we observe for many sources. So, but that in the in the soft state, but this move even much closer. So radial distance is very small. So frequency that we are calling about inverse to the radial distance. So, if you can see so why can't it be subharmonic? So you talk about harmonic. You know, why can't you see her subharmonic frequencies, for example? Yeah, subharmonic also like in GS, I, I do not have. So you need so to get this subharmonic, harmonic, your time scale is also important. As to said, observe each, each, in each orbit, it's like only uh, uh, 90 kilosecond or something data we have. And from in, in case of GF339, we observe subharmonic and harmonic both. Like it is, one is, uh, uh, once it is moving from harmonic to subharmonic, and again, like it is going to uh, higher harmonics. So those features we observe. So there are many QPOs, like it's a Jew. I just sold one to show that this is the in time domain, we see some kind of features. Okay. But yeah, I, I, in this, in our recent paper, we, we did orbit orbit wise as to set analysis here. Yeah, this one. So here this uh, orbit wise and please observe that. You also see some kind of polarization <laughs> Polarization, my next I did not have time. So I wanted to talk about this polarization recently. India launched, NASA launched IXP and yes, we can because as you can see, this is nice picture. Nice uh, study recently 
they did using polarization, uh, different instrument they use, and you can see low polarization, high polarization. They call this part might be from the corona, and this is another mechanism possibly from jet. So, yeah, anything is going on. Other questions? So, just a few years. So, when we see, so you showed the Q diagram, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's the <clears throat> hardness ratio intensity. Yeah. So, but but apart from that, mm -hmm. I mean, there must be like uh, theoretical models which kind of predict, of course, the Q diagram. I mean, it, it's, it's well understood that why we see such things yeah, or not. Theoretical models they did not do. Yes. I know, but I'm asking that why we see such a intensity hardness ratio. Oh, uh, this uh, this Q shape diagram. Yeah. Yes, the states. Let's say hard, soft, or um, sorry, hard, hard, uh, low, soft, mm -hmm. intermediate, high, mm -hmm. soft. All these states that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So why we see that? that? As you said, that there are physical reasons for yeah. having this kind of. Yeah, that's why we are. Uh, yeah. I, what I'm asking is that. Uh, is this physics completely well understood that why we see such features? Yeah, at least in research, like you know, different group, uh, they interpret in a different way. Like uh, so, that's why we don't know like who is uh, which one is the correct one. But the physical model that we use can explain that when the the cold matter accretion rate is low, but hot matter's uh, rate is high, we are getting the hard state. Okay. Because we need a bigger corona, hot corona to produce hard radius. Okay? Intermediate, when these two accretion rates are more or less equivalent. Like they are comparable. Yeah. Yeah. Cold and hot, they are comparable. We get intermediate. When soft state, like your cold matter is dominating, cold accretion rate, we get soft state. The opposite starts. Like again, the same thing, hot accretion rate. Uh, Increases, cold decreases, so we get again the declining phase. So this is the rising phase. Yeah. So other than uh, this uh, spectral, I mean, let's say hardness ratio, mm. intensity plot, or the mm. color magnitude mm. plot of X-ray, mm. as I understand, mm. uh, are there other observational features where you have seen these uh, different states of X-rays? observational Aspects such a key that they get different states of exercise. Okay. Actually, uh, quasi periodic oscillation is a width. It is a GS code, it is a Q by Q, but it is a frequency by frequency. So, it is a CO take on a spectral state classified for like the learning on all this. Yes. Other questions? So, I, I had a Two questions, but let me ask one. So, at the very end, when you are talking about jet cap, <laughs> so unless you put magnetic fields in yeah. your theory, yeah, yeah. Uh, can, can you say anything robust about production of, you know, any sort of collimated outflow? No, it's not that collimated. Yeah, definitely, we need magnetic field, and also it's not like large scale magnetic field. It's a very tiny up to the sonic point. So it's. A, very, very tiny. As I said, it will form shock and all these things, but before that, it's, it's just the base of the jet. Yeah. And the other one, you are uh, connecting the QPOs with the corona. Yeah. But I always thought that QPOs have, uh, since QPOs are bit frequencies or things like that, uh, there is some periodicity involved, so uh, it has to do. I mean, corona, we envision corona more like some spherical thing at the center or some lamppost type of thing, whereas disk is something that's rotating. Yeah, that is right. the frequency. Right. But now, when you have QPO, mm -hmm. if it is generated from the corona, mm -hmm. then the oscillation is coming from what? From the well, oscillation of the boundary of the corona. The boundary of the corona is oscillating. Okay, so okay. because of the cooling and heating. So, why it is coming from the corona, that is one, uh, one in this paper, our astrocyte paper, we scored that. Because when we calculated, sorry, 
Yeah, when we, cal we calculated QPO frequency in this, in this paper. So we calculated QPO frequency for each orbit. So we also calculated the power of the QPO frequency and plotted with energy. And we noticed that for different energy band, the power was maximum when it was around 10 keV. Okay, so that indicates that most of the photons which are participated in QPO frequency are from the corona because their energy is high, like around 10 keV. 